All right, it is 8.01, so we are going to get started. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here, and especially thank you, Heidi, for giving us of some of your time tonight to teach us. So anyways, um, just a little quick intro on Heidi. I have known her now for a number of years. She's been a huge mentor to me. She is also my guru anytime that I have questions on the nitty gritty of supplementation, nutrition, how things work and interact in the body, the brain, the gut, everything. She is the one that I go to. So she's incredibly knowledgeable. Um, any questions that pop into your mind as we go through this, go ahead and just drop them in the chat and then she will address those after. And then she's been willing to get in our master your morning group on the app. So if you have any questions that um, come up later on, you can also ask them there. But this week we are focusing on water intake as that is one of the things that we're doing first thing in the morning is drinking at least 16 ounces of water. And I realized all the knowledge that I have about water intake and what it does for us came from Heidi, most of it at least. And she knows a whole lot more on exactly what's going on inside our bodies throughout the night and in the morning and different ways that we can make sure we're getting the absolute most out of our water intake and anything that we might put it in the morning. So um, thanks again, Heidi for being here. And I will now turn the time over to you. Thank you. Cool. Okay. I'm super excited to be with you guys. Can you hear me? Okay. Everybody good with the sound. Okay. Um, I was listening to Ryan say that and I'm like, that's so interesting. I want to know her too. I didn't know that he thought that much of me. That's really cool. I'm glad I've been able to help him with everything or with things like that. Um, I have no other qualifications other than I love to read lots of nerdy books. That's the only thing I can tell you. Um, I am a foot sewner by profession and I also teach. And so I really have a voracious thirst to know about the body and how it works. Um, all of the things that I'm going to tell you tonight, I will be able to kind of give you a good, solid scientific background um, so that you can understand and go to those sources if it kind of lights you up, or I like to call it the green light. So if anything I say tonight gives you your green light, go check it out just a little bit more. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about tonight is your liver. Your liver is actually a very crucial organ in the body and in the digestive system. Um, but the reason why we want to start drinking water first thing in the morning is because of what the liver does. And so I just kind of want to get nerdy for a minute and talk about the function of the liver so that you guys can understand why putting water first thing in your body in the morning is so crucial. And so, um, I'm just going to get up here. I'm a teacher, you know, I teach students these things about the body. And so I am going to like be active and showing you guys where this is in your body. Um, but your liver is located on the right side. It's right here below your ribs. They call it the brain of your gut. It's a huge organ. Um, it has many jobs, but the basic function of the liver is to sort. It sorts and it filters. And so every time you eat something, the job of the liver is to, um, after it's been broken down through the stomach, it's basically to filter and get things to different places. But if the liver were a person like you and I, the job would be imagine every time you ate somebody throwing something on you and you had to shower and get ready all over again every time you ate and so that's why intermittent fasting is really trending right now or eating windows because when we combine that eating into a certain window or a certain amount of time it gives the liver a break and if the liver is feeling overwhelmed um it helps the liver reset and you can start to process and absorb things a little bit better so the brain of the gut is the liver. Now, the other job of the liver that is really important, and this is where our water intake comes into play, is the liver will go to sleep about 10 o'clock every night. And then between two and three o'clock in the morning, that liver wakes up. And imagine if you were left alone in your home for a week, a day, and in that time that you were left alone, you deep cleaned. You did the baseboards, you did the walls, you did the light fixtures, and then you started to organize and you started to organize all these spaces in your home. You got everything ready to go to the DI. And then when you were all done with that cleaning, when you were all done sorting and filtering, you just left it in your house. You never took out any of that trash. You never finished the process of filtering and cleaning. 
when you wake up in the morning and you don't hydrate, it's the exact same as if you did all of that work all night long and didn't take the trash out or didn't go to Salvation Army or DI. It would just be like all the dirty rags that you used to clean your home with, you left inside your house. And anybody who's ever done anything like that knows that would be a complete waste. And so the importance of hydrating first thing in the morning is that water helps to take out the trash. It helps to clean and to filter this organ that's doing so much for your body. Um, when we talk about detox in the body, we focus on the liver. That's where we go with any kind of detox. Um, just to give you like some nerdy anatomy, um, and I see Brianna and Aaron on here and they've been through my classes. So I'm sorry, you guys are getting a repeat, but um, one of the things that the liver works through, it works through a couple of systems, but one of the systems is the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is an incredible secondary cleaning system for the body. We notice a lot of lymphatic fluid, especially you guys as you're in this challenge, because the way that the lymphatic system exits or cleans is through sweat and it's through tears. And so um, the liver is cleaning all this lymphatic fluid for the gut. It's also cleaning blood. It's called the hepatic filter and it's blood that's filtering into the liver. The liver cleans that blood up based on what we're eating. And then after it's cleaned it, it returns that blood to the heart, right? Through the right atrium. And so it gets this really quick process from organs through the circulatory system and through the lymphatic system. So when we go and support that system first thing in the morning, we're essentially taking out all the trash from the night before. We're organizing the room and we are um, taking what we don't need to the DI. So super important that we hydrate first thing in the morning. Now, one of the ways that you can like maximize your water and work, have it working, um, working smarter for you is to put lemon in it. Um, lemons are one of the most powerfully alkalizing um, things that we have access to. Some people choose to use lemon essential oils. I think that's great but I would really encourage you to consider using a fresh living lemon. You can actually pop the whole thing in your water and you can squeeze the lemon out um, and you can, the essential oils will start to release as it's in your water. Um, there's a physician by the name of Alejandro Junger and he wrote a book called Clean. And he was a physician that grew up, I believe it's in Peru, and he grew up um, like in the mountaintops and these organic farms and had access to all this amazing food and really environmentally untouched um, his, his growing up, right? He comes to America, to New York City. I think he did his training and fellowship at NYC in Columbia, if I remember correctly. And in his third year of medical school, he is hospitalized. He is so ill, he can hardly function. So this boy that grows up on this organic farm coming to New York City to do training to become a doctor, this put him right in the hospital. And instead of giving up, he got really curious. He got really curious about the body and about how it works. And he's done a lot of incredible research about lemon water and what it does to the body. Um, essentially, as you're drinking that lemon water, um, his whole book is how lemon water runs through your colon, which sounds so weird, right? But um, he, it's a great book. And he talks about as we drink that lemon water, it alkalizes the liver. And so the liver is going to pull from that lymphatic system and also from that circulatory system. It's going to take all of that garbage and it's going to penetrate the wall of the colon and exit all of that junk through the colon. It's not that you have that much stool stored in your body. It's that those circulatory lymphatic systems through the liver are going to actually, actually like expunge or expel that through your colon. And so he has a whole system of using lemon water in the morning. This is gross and watching your stool process. And that's how you know, like what level you're at and how deep you're going into the body. Um, and so if you are ever wanting to consider a very simple, um, very organic cleanse, it's warm lemon water, adding lemons for about four, four hours in the morning. And I think you're drinking every 20 to 30 minutes. It's a very interesting thing to go through and a very quick way to detox and to support that liver. Um, the other thing to consider with drinking water first thing in the morning is warm, the temperature of your water. 
So even though the body has this incredible ability to um, like its own temperature system to heat things up and to process through, when we start with some warm water in the morning, it actually helps that liver when we send cold water through the liver and through the stomach, it's kind of like it creates this gelatinous process and it kind of um, makes it harder to break down. Think about taking a cold shower versus a warm shower. There's just a different effect that you're going to get. We release and things become more fluid as it's warm. So really consider temperature in the morning as you are taking in this water. Um, the other thing to consider with water, and I'm almost winding up, I'm going really fast so you guys don't have to listen to me talk all night, but um, the other thing to consider, especially as you guys are working out and you're sweating a lot, a lot of your sweat is um, minerals in your body that you are getting rid of. And so I've actually been working with quite a few clients the past month or so that have gone into some really serious weight loss. I'm talking like 40 to 80 pounds within um, a six month period. They are sweating a lot. And when we sweat a lot, um, we lose, it takes a lot of work, right? So a lot of the body's energy is processing out through that sweat. One of the main components or main minerals that you're losing is a mineral called magnesium or an element called magnesium. Magnesium is our calming agent in the body. It's held in the left ventricle of the heart. That's where the calm is uh, reached for when the body needs to be calmed down. So when you're starting to go through Charlie horses or you're starting to have panic attacks, most likely you've been using a lot of magnesium in your body. You've been sweating it out or it takes a hundred molecules of magnesium to break down one molecule of sugar. So imagine how much it takes to just process a candy bar or a soda or any kind of drink like that. It takes a lot of that calming agent from our body. So I've been working with a couple people who have been in some pretty intense weight loss and they're noticing crazy anxiety. They're also noticing the more they work out, their muscles just aren't recovering as well. Um, and so it's a really simple fix by just adding some magnesium, um, either through oral supplementation or popping some Epsom salts into your bath. It's a really effective way to get magnesium and to replace that as you're sweating. Um, the other thing that I want you to consider with water or maybe think about is adding some real salt to your water. And I'm not talking Morton salt. Um, I'm talking like salt with color, salt with flex, salt with some different variations in what it looks like. We don't want a pure white salt. That's actually a good sign that everything good has been stripped out of the salt. Um, the reason that Morton salt is the girl with the umbrella and the rain coming down is they add an anti-caking agent so that salt will not clump together so that it will pour smoothly. And that anti-caking agent is actually what is so bad for you. That actually makes you retain water and hold water in an improper way. And so when you are looking for salt, you want to look for salt with color. Now, I'm kind of a freak about this kind of stuff. And one thing I like to consider um, when you're looking for things to put in your body, I mean, we're hearing shop local, not only shop local, but look what the creator of the world has given to us locally. Um, Redmond salt is actually, if you're in Utah and you're living around Utah, there's a location, it's down in Utah County-ish, and there was a volcano actually down there. And underneath that layer of the volcano is a crust of salt in the earth. And that is where you're gonna find Redmond salt harvested. Redmond salt is one of the most powerful natural salts that you can find. Um, when we get into its profile, the, the mineral profile is crazy good, but the number one, um, the highest containing mineral in Redmond salt is chloride. Now, chloride is a really interesting mineral. Um, one of the main properties of chloride is that it is the most important electrolyte that we keep in our blood. When you're sweating, you want to be able to not have that water just go right through you. You actually want to be able to retain water for a good two to three hours. You want to be able to not have to pee so quick. That's actually a sign that you're not holding water the way you need to be and your electrolytes are short. 
Um, and so a consideration to take in when you're working out a lot is to put a real salt in so that that chloride can hold that water in your body. And it's actually going to help lower your blood pressure. It helps to maintain your blood volume. So it helps contribute to building blood instead of taking away from it. And it also works beautifully on the pH of your body, which is kind of a number that determines if you're um, in acidosis or if you're alkaline. And we wanna be somewhere in the middle when we're at about a five on the pH scale, disease just can't grow. And so keeping in a really alkaline um, position on that pH scale is important and chloride contributes to that. Um, it also helps keep the, um, the amount of fluid inside and outside of your cells in a really happy balance. And that's what we're looking for. Um, and so using a little bit of salt in your water with some lemon, having it warm in the morning, really powerful way to help restore, to help clean out and to help retain that water so that as you get your morning workout going, that you're gonna be able to keep those electrolytes going. Redmond Salt has a really killer product called Relight, R-E-L-Y-T-E. -E. Um, it's a drink packet that you can put into your drinks, that you can put into your water, and it's got their salt. It does have stevia in it, and so you want to be really aware of how your body reacts to stevia. It's a sweetener. Um, it's a plant that's found naturally, uh, but it's 100 times sweeter than sugar. And so you really want to be careful with stevia because sometimes um, the ventricles of the heart can kind of freak out with that. That's just good G whiz information. As we're looking at health and nutrition in the body, there's a lot of companies that are actually moving to use stevia in a lot of their products. And you really have to determine if your body, if you feel way too revved up from it and you're noticing heart palpitations or skipping heart, now look at the products that you're using and see if stevia is involved. Some people have no problem with it whatsoever. Um, and so if you don't have a problem with it, you might want to consider that Relight by um, Redmond, Redmond Farms um, for your drink in the morning. Okay, one, have we gone over everything? Oh, one last thing. And this is just totally a witch doctor thing that you don't even have to believe if you don't want to, but it's just kind of fun. Um, and I was looking for my source on this and I can't find it anymore. So I didn't save it in the right spot, but it's just kind of a woo woo witchcraft, maybe a consideration you want to make. Um, a couple years ago, I found a study that Harvard did and it was about having your son charged in the water and um, leaving water out in a glass container. No, it can't have any plaque plastic conductors. So there can't be any plastic parts of this. Um, it needs to be total glass, but it needs to be um, in a spot where sun is hitting that water. And the concept is, is that the sun actually charges the water and they call it energy water. Um, there were some speculation that it was helping um, infuse vitamin D into that water. And that makes sense to me. Vitamin D is actually a hormone that's synthesized inside our body when the sun hits our skin. And so for me, I, I call it vitamin D water. Um, another thing to consider is that if we are not holding our water properly, we're probably pretty deficient in vitamin D. And so we might wanna consider supplementing with vitamin D or when the weather is more um, favorable, sitting outside for about 20 minutes and letting the sun hit every part of our skin. And when we're in that 20 minute range, we're within a safe range. Um, without sunscreen. It's about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and also another consideration too, if you're sitting out in the sun for longer than 20 minutes and you're noticing a lot of inflammation or you're noticing burning of your skin really quick, you're dealing with some systemic inflammation in the body. We should actually be able to take sun in for longer than 20 minutes. And typically that inflammation is usually generally stored in the gut. And so, you know, addressing some gut health issues might be a consideration if you're noticing that while you're sitting out in the sun. But sun water is super fun. It's really cool. We use it at my house a lot. And my kids love to fill their water bottles with it. And that one, like I said, I couldn't find that Harvard study anymore. So we can just file it under the witchcraft and that will just be fun. But you can try it. And the worst that could happen is you might notice the difference with it. You know, you might notice that you're starting to retain your water a little bit longer from using that. 
because just maybe that vitamin C or that sun charge is sneaking into your body um, as well. That was so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Were you guys even ready for all of that? What? <laughs> Any questions for me? Anything that you want to know? I want to say I learned a lot more than I already knew, Heidi. Thank you so much. Did you really, Erin? Yes. I actually, I just told my husband, I was like, we get down the 32 ounce mug of water or mug so that I can make, I, I've been doing lemon water, yeah. but to put the, make a 32 ounce mug of lemon water with some, add some salt to it. And I'm going to four hour it in the morning. Oh, good. Yeah. And even putting some honey in it too, because sometimes we need that sugar to boost that, um, that function in our body. We need the salt and the sugar. And so using, yes. you know, a pure maple syrup or a little bit of honey with that super helpful. Okay. And I'm going to do it like a fourth to a half a teaspoon is a good place to be. And you know, Aaron, like your body is going to tell you how much salt you need. If it's hard to swallow, that's too much salt. That's, yeah. that's a muscle in your throat closing off saying too much. We don't need this. If you okay. can do that with ease, you're at a good amount. So I, I love, love it. it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Can I detail the lemon detox again? Yes, I will tell you. So the book is called Clean. It's by Alejandra Junger, J-U-N-G-E-R. The book's fascinating. If you're just kind of like have nothing else to do and want a nerdy read, I totally recommend it. I use it all the time, that book. Um, it essentially is using lemon water in the morning for about three to four hours. And you're just gonna, let me think. I think you're using a half a lemon squoze into eight ounces. And I think you're doing eight ounces every 20 to 30 minutes. And as you do that, okay, let's just get serious. I'm, I love anatomy and I love the body. We are actually gonna watch your stool change. So you're gonna go from solid stool to once you know that you're down to like the deepest cellular level and you're penetrating the lymphatic system, you're actually gonna go to like watery stool that's broken apart. Not diarrhea, we don't want like pure liquid, but we just want like broken apart and watery. I'm gonna say the word fluffy, that is absolutely terrible, but that's totally what you're looking for. That means that the water is totally cleaning and coming from a really good spot through the circulatory system and through the lymphatic system. So good. I'll leave it at that. And we don't have to get any more detailed, but a good morning using a good 16 ounces of a salty lemon water, you're not going to get that crazy effect. So you don't have to worry about like, if you leave the house, if something's going to happen, but if you wanted to get serious in the morning and go for four hours, you would get into a really beautiful, deep cellular detox mode for that. And notice what you notice as well after you've done that. How are you feeling? Are you feeling lighter? Um, let's see. Does it have to be lemon or can lime work? Um, lime, limes can work as well. They're secondary on um, alkaline scale, but both of them are really powerful. They're also jam-packed with vitamin C. And vitamin C is where we store all of, um, that's where the adrenals store vitamin C. They have the biggest repository in the body. And our adrenals are in charge of if we're being chased by a bear or if we're in rest and digest. And so that citrus has like a, a bonus too, to help the adrenals. And most of us, unfortunately, are eating cortisol for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's just kind of the environment that we live in. Any other, okay, let's see. Is there any way you could have the highlights and things you do and talked about typed up? Yes. Um, and what was the name of the packet that you add to your water? Yes, I will. It was Relight, R-E-L-Y-T-E. -E. And you're gonna find that on the Redmond Farms website. I order my salt in a big bucket um, and that will last us over a year. It's a really great way to, I think it's $40 for their big bucket of salt. You should be able to find that salt locally at pretty much any grocery store. It's pretty popular now, um, but you can order it from their website too. Yeah. 
yes, I will highlight um, in the app, maybe the book that I talked about, um, the Redmond Salt um, website, I could put that there. And then I could just write like, why we want warm water going into our body, the woo woo sun water, that one's kind of fun. Then um, also, oh, one more quick thing, sorry. The other thing that's really helpful in the morning after you have detoxed with that lemon, salty, honey water, whatever you feel good about adding to that water. And this is kind of like a contraindication in the fitness world. But if you are feeling that that's made a difference, and um, I found for myself when I was eating heavy things in the morning, it just was not flowing through my body. And so I started looking for a lot of different alternatives. Nothing was working for me for what I was eating in the morning without making me really sick. And I found that it was my body needs lots of fluid in the morning. And so I start with um, lemon water and then I'll go to some probiotics that I take. And then I'll hit about 16 ounces of celery juice. Same concept. I'm just really working um, liver detox for me personally. That feels really good. I know celery juice. It's like you belong to the brown pants club. Once you've drunk enough celery juice, it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> There's so many good cell salts in there that we can't find any other place. So I don't recommend that unless you're crazy. Um, and then after that, I'm going to start to use some fruit to my advantage. And that's the part that eh, sometimes that can spike. So it depends on where your insulin levels are. Are you in that insulin resistant category or not? I found for me personally, that quick fructose from fruit was the fuel my liver needs because it's overworked. I had hepatitis as a kid. And so if we're having digestive issues, that's actually a quick fuel to have a banana or a grapefruit um, or even an apple in the morning. And I juice a lot of my citrus as well. So if any of you guys are having digestive issues, that might be something to consider. And then I'm going straight to smoothie after that for me. And I'm not eating a real meal till like noon every day. And I'm using, you know, lots of greens, um, a powdered spirulina, some wheat barley, or yeah, some wheat grass with some barley in there as well hemp hearts, chia seeds, flax seed, all of that I'm putting into my smoothie and blending up really well. So if anyone is having issues with that, um, that's a great way to go. I like the phrase, let there be light. I like to have a lot of light in the morning, a lot of fluid in the morning to kind of get my body, body going. So anything else? I think Jenna had a question right before. So can you also address what you know about spring water versus filtered water? Yes, thank you, Ryan. Um, I, I, this is what I know. Spring water is pretty pure. Um, that is going to be God's gift to us, right? And so if we know that it's not in a contaminated source, that's actually going to have a lot of beautiful minerals in it that are typically stripped out with city water. Um, filtered water, it depends on your filter. And so you have to be aware of um, what your city allows in the water and at what rate that they allow that into and there should be on every city um, water report you should be able to get your percentages to see what city is letting into the water um, from my understanding and my studying the Berkey filter is the most comprehensive filter that you can buy to have in your home it's also quite pricey um, I think it's about four hundred dollars for the gallon filter possibly but from my study and my research, Berkey is going to filter out the very most garbage. Spring water, like the well that we have here in North Ogden, that's about as pure as you can get. If you can do that, do that. Just be careful about the container you're putting it in. If you're putting it in a container that's plastic and has BPA, probably better off drinking your city water. You know, like you just have to be careful. You have to make sure that it's like a container that's approved for that. Those are my thoughts about that. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? Nope, I don't, but I just have to brag that the, the water at the gym, we fill up our bottles with the spring water from North Ogden, just so you know. What? That's amazing. Are you serious? Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, just to pat myself on the back there. Jenna now goes and fills them up for us and brings them to the gym. She's fantastic. So I don't know if it's BPA free though, the, the bottles we put it in. So I'll have to check that and see, but yeah. 
So that's, I'm really glad you didn't say that's like the worst of the worst. I was like, oh shoot, I really hope we're doing the right thing at the gym for people. So that's the same thing as Redmond Salt. That's how the creator gives to his people liberally with all the good nutrients and minerals from the earth. It's perfect. I love that. Good, good, good. Um, I had just a couple of questions. Is there a benefit to stop eating at a certain time before you go to bed as far as like helping the liver so that it can go through and filter everything? And then also, um, as far as getting in your salt daily, does it need to be in the morning? Could it be in the afternoon, evening? Like, is there any timing issues with that? Yeah. So um, my study about nighttime eating, um, I haven't seen too many differentiations on when you stop eating. It's a window. You want to keep it within a window. So if you say um, specifically that like you want to have a six hour eating window and you're going to go from 11 to five, that would be a really lovely eating window. If you're not feeling like your body is ready for food until like three or four o'clock, you really want to consider some adrenal treatment or seeking out some help with your adrenal glands. If your body is not waking up and you're feeling awake by three o'clock and really awake by 10, there's some serious like pituitary issues and endocrine gland issues. And so um, that would be the only stipulation I could think of if you don't want to eat past a certain time. Um, it, that's a little bit complicated, but that does play into some endocrine issues. And so if you feel better eating later at night because you don't feel awake, I would probably go see somebody about that and have some hormone levels run just to see what's going on. But as far as the benefit, I think it's just making sure you have an eating window so that you give that liver a break and so that it can break down and do everything that it needs to. What was the second part of that question, Ryan? Or the second? Uh, the salt, timing of the salt. Oh yeah, salt, it can be taken up at any point in the day. We also cook pretty liberally with it at our house. Um, just because it helps build blood and that's just so important to the body. And that's something I've been really focusing on the past little bit. Um, and it's just very mineral dense and we want to get all these good minerals with, especially with you guys sweating so much, you really want to replace that at a good rate or not sweating so much. Maybe you're just stressing or crying. <laughs> I see somebody laughing when I said sweating so much. So I'm just treating you guys like you're like, animals, sweating buckets, measuring by the gallon, how much sweat is coming out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Well, I know I learned so much. If we could please give Heidi a nice little round of applause. She did amazing. I know that I learned a lot. Um, this was amazing. Thank you so, so much. So if nobody has any other questions, once again, Heidi's going to be in our group on the app, the Master Your Morning group. If you have any other questions that come up, she's a phenomenal, phenomenal resource. Um, as you can tell, she has a lot of knowledge that's very practical and you can apply it to change your life. I like, guess I love everything she told us. It's practical. You can do it. It's something that you can do for the rest of your life. That's going to make a massive change on the way that you feel. And oh. she, uh, <laughs> Jenna, you're awesome. <laughs> and she just, she just has so much knowledge and like, everything that she's been through and she practiced what she preaches. Like you can't, you can't lead what you don't live. And she definitely lives um, this healthy lifestyle. So we love being connected with her and help having her help us out. So anyways, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you again so, so much, Heidi, for coming, learned so much. Um, if anybody showed up to the call late, be sure you go and watch the recording that we're going to post because there was, it was just information packed. And so we really appreciate you and hopefully we can get Heidi back on here for a, another educational lesson because I love this so much. So thank you so much, Heidi. You all have a wonderful night and thanks again.